In this video, I'm gonna be talking about independently looping video, audio, and overlays in Ecamm Live. A little bit niche, but if it sounds interesting, then keep watching. Hello, welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec. And uh, this video is in response to a question that was asked in the Ecamm community by Brother Phil. Uh, and the question was, how can we loop video and audio uh, and text overlays or image overlays uh, in Ecamm Live sort of independently of one another? And uh, just to give a bit of background into the exact use case of this, uh, this is going to be something for uh, Christmas where there is going to be Christmas music playing in the background, but then there are also going to be a sequence of videos that need to sort of loop continuously. Uh, and then there is going to be overlays in the form of things like scriptures and so on that are going to be put up uh, and then potentially also speaking over the top of those as well. So the thing about it is that all of these things are moving kind of independently of each other. So the music is separate from the, uh, the videos and the overlays are separate to both of those as well. So they're kind of looping at different rates potentially. Uh, you could obviously do this in an external editor by actually just putting all the videos together, adding in the music tracks over the top of that and creating the loop in that way. Uh, but that wasn't the question. The question was, how can this be done in Ecamm Live? And it can be done in Ecamm Live uh, just with one extra minor little step uh, beforehand. Uh, and I think that this will give uh, the results that uh, Phil's looking for. Uh, and we can do it so that it's automated so that even the overlays are looping as well and the whole thing just runs in a continuous loop. Uh, or we can do it so that the, uh, the actual overlays are brought up manually uh, if there's going to be any sort of spoken word over the top of those as well. So that's the plan for today. Uh, and so let's get straight into it, shall we? Uh, so first of all, what I've done is I've just got three random samples of uh, audio and three random uh, videos as well. So uh, for the audio, uh, what I've done is that's not the right place. That is my audio interface, but <laughs> it's not what I'm looking for. Uh, this is my uh, folder. So I've got three uh, audio tracks here. All I did was I went to Epidemic Sound uh, and just typed in Christmas music and grabbed basically the first three instrumental pieces of Christmas music that were on the list. Uh, so incidentally, if you weren't aware what Epidemic is, Epidemic Sound is the resource that uh, I use to get all music for my channel uh, and for any other videos that I create related to the channel. And you can get your free trial at Take One tech.io slash epidemic uh, and it basically takes all the headache out of uh, using music in your videos. Uh, I did go down the Adobe stock route before because I have a, an existing license to that and you do get access to the epidemic library as part of that. The only trouble is you have to go through and manually enter the license code into each and every video and uh, it just wasn't worth it. For the amount of time that takes, uh, you just go and sign up to Epidemic, you whitelist your channel, and that's it. You can download all of the music that you like and sound effects and use them in your videos to your heart's content. And there is such a great range of music on there. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's a great service. So that's what I'm using and I highly recommend it. So anyway, back to <laughs> the main event, which is uh, this music that I've downloaded. Uh, and having said how great the music on Epidemic is, this is going to be a random potluck because I did just download the three uh, first uh, instrumentals that I could find. So uh, that's the first things that I've uh, done. In fact, let's have a quick listen. Here's one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if I'm I don't know if I'm selling this well to be honest with you. Here we go. It's just three instrumental. What's this one? Oh, Holy Night, uh, and it's a guitar version of that. And the next one is the first Noel on guitar. <laughs> there we go. You get the impression. So that's literally uh, just three tracks, just to demonstrate this uh, in with a sort of Christmas theme. I'm sure there are lots of other styles of Christmas music in there, but I haven't really dug into it just yet. I need to though for Vlogmas, which is coming up, and I will be doing a whole series of. Uh, 31 in fact vlogmas videos so uh, more on that later um so then what i did was i also downloaded three uh christmas related videos and i did that using uh, uh from a site called pexels so that's p-e-x-e-l-s uh, and pexels.com and it's a free stock video and uh photo site basically so you can go and search for uh videos and they've got uh, quite a range of different videos on all sorts of different uh topics just search for something you like and they are free to use in your uh, uh, videos or things like that. So I've basically just got three videos and three audio tracks. So if I come back to this one, uh, and these are just, uh, let me just bring this one up. Here we go. This is a little fireplace, uh, fireplace? <laughs> fireplace scene. <laughs> there we go. Let me make that a little bit smaller. You get the impression. 
So it's just a little uh, little video there of a Christmas tree in a living room. And so I'm just gonna basically cycle through these uh, three videos. Now there was one extra step that I uh, mentioned in order to uh, get this to work with, um, uh, with the way that we're gonna do things. Uh, and that was to basically stitch these three clips together. So that's the one thing that I did outside of Ecamm. And uh, to do that, what I did was I opened up the uh, file. So just double clicked on it in the finder. And then if I just uh, zoom in on my screen a minute, come into demo mode. So this is the uh, the file in the finder, uh, or sorry, in uh, QuickTime on the Mac. And then what I did was I went up to the uh, QuickTime player menu at the top and then clicked on edit. And then there's just this option here, add clip to end. And that's an easy way to add clips onto the end of existing clips, or obviously just basically stitching them all together. For what we're doing, where there is going to, although there is audio on these tracks, we're not actually interested in the audio as such because we've got going to have our own audio. Uh, there's no problem. But just one thing to bear in mind, if you do use this method of stitching stuff, what I have found before is that sometimes it causes audio sync issues. Uh, so uh, just something to be aware of. But uh, like I say, we're not going to be uh, bothered about that because we are just uh, using just the image itself or the uh, the video itself without the uh, the. Uh, the audio. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is uh, actually come back into demo mode and I'll show you how we're going to sort of build this all out now. So here I am in demo mode. I've got these uh, different files. So actually this is the one we want, the uh, stitched together clip. And then I've got these three audio tracks that uh, I just downloaded from Epidemic. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is uh, I've already created a folder. So I'm in the sound effects panel in Epidemic. And if you're not sure where to get that, then you can come over to onto these uh, uh, menus on the left hand side, the right hand side rather, <laughs> uh, and then click uh, this one that has the list of, uh, it's like a little note symbol with a, a list. So this is the uh, sound effects panel or sound effects window. Uh, and so once I've got that open, you can create a new folder, which is what I did. Uh, and so I've already done that. I'll just delete that one now. So I've got a Christmas tracks folder, which is currently empty. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these three audio tracks uh, and I'm just gonna drag them into that folder. So I'll put them under there, underneath the folder, and they are now inside of that folder. So that is the music in place. Now what we want to do is actually have it start to uh, loop. So if I click on the folder, you can do this on an individual track basis actually. So if you come onto the track and you click on the little cogwheel, uh, then you've got different things here. You can adjust the volume of them. So I am actually gonna turn the volume down on all of them because we don't necessarily want them playing uh, at full volume if we've got other stuff going on over the top. Uh, certainly for what I'm doing here, I'm gonna be speaking, so I don't want them too, uh, too loud. Uh, so I'm just going to turn all the volumes down of all of them. You can do this as a, a, on the master volume, by the way, but I always just prefer to do it this way. Um, because if I, let me start to show you that. Where's it gone? My, uh, my volume panel. Uh, in fact, it's somewhere else on the screen. Of course it is. Let me just show you. So you have got the uh, master volumes here for sound effects. Uh, so you can change things on there, but I like to just adjust them on here as well so that uh, if ever I want something else to play, at a greater volume, then uh, I can do that without uh, everything else sort of blowing it out. So in any case, uh, that's up to you, the way you want to do that. But assuming you have got all the volumes uh, set, you, you've got this option here, which is basically loop. Now, if I do that on a single track, then it is just gonna keep looping that track if I start to play it. However, if you have got stuff that's all in folders like this, uh, then what you can do is you can just actually put a loop onto the folder instead. Uh, and so now if I start playing this, uh, what that will do, is it will start playing it in the background. And you can see how, what I was talking about, I can actually adjust the volume of it here as well. Uh, but having sort of pre-adjusted the levels of them, then it's just gonna stay in the background. So uh, that is the music. I'm just gonna pause it for one second because I'm feeling quite somber actually listening to that. <laughs> uh, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna deal with the video. Uh, and what we're gonna do with the video is basically have it running just in the background of all scenes. And what I mean by that is in the uh, the overlays tab here, um, when you are adding in different overlays, uh, you've got three options really. You can either show it in all scenes here, uh, so any that are underneath this title are showing all scenes. Any that are in this section are just shown in the current scene, uh, but any that are shown down here show in background will appear um, basically in the background of all scenes as well. So that is exactly where we want to put this video. Now at the moment I have my, uh, if I just toggle my camera off, uh, I've got my little background image, so I can turn that off and we've got a completely blank scene now behind me. So I'll just leave that off for the, for the moment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my, uh, 
this stitched clip that I created and I'm going to drag it into uh, here into the background uh, and let's just leave it completely in the background and now as if by magic if I turn my camera off we've got this playing in the background so now what we need to do is uh, if I just come to this uh, clip and edit it for one second uh, whoopsie daisy in fact what am I doing now moved it all out of the way let me get to it there we go uh, let me click on this little uh, arrow so it, it was as if i couldn't actually see it then for a moment when it was in the background so i'm just moving it up here so that i can get to this part this is what i'm looking for the little uh, little tracking um uh <laughs> what do you call it <laughs> the time time bar uh, and then i'm going to click the little arrow here and what we want to do is uh, loop so i'm going to click on uh, loop for that one so that, that basically, when it gets to the end, let me just quickly skip to the end. Uh, when it gets to the end, you'll see it will just go straight back round to the beginning. So that now, let me just move it back into the background. That now is just running in the background at all times. So I'll stick my camera back on there for the moment. So we've now got the, uh, the uh, clip running in the background. Uh, if we were to start the music again, We've got the music that's running in the background at all times uh, and then we've just got my big face over the top of it. So let's get rid of that for a moment. <laughs> now what we're going to do is actually build out the scenes that we're going to sort of loop through. So what I'm going to do is come down uh, onto my scenes tab and then I'm going to click on the, uh, uh, the folder icon and we are going to create a folder. So I'll uh, bring that down to the bottom. Let me just drag this down. Let me just put this as... Uh, Xmas demo. There we go. Uh, and I'll drag that down to the bottom. Whoops, we don't want it outside of there. There we go. Hopefully your uh, <laughs> scenes tab won't be quite as cluttered as mine. So I've now got this little uh, demo uh, area down here. So let me just pop my camera back on for a moment and I'm going to create a new scene. So this is now actually building out the actual uh, actual scenes that we're going to be using. So this is now an empty scene. So let's call this uh, uh, well let's call it scene one shall we <laughs> uh, this is where we're basically going to have all of our overlays so let's just say that they are um, uh, text overlays that are going to have written uh, text or scriptures or something like that so I'll come over to the overlays button and I'll click on the uh, add overlay Whoops. and that is for some reason no that is strange what's happening there let me come back to this in a minute I'll try uh, let me just try and add a camera overlay in let me try text again ah I see why <laughs> let me just add that it was because it had brought the box up somewhere else and I couldn't see it there we go so uh, I'll take that one off let us say that we're going to have um, whoops we're going to have uh, scripture uh, one and uh, I'm guessing that this would actually be in uh, uh, maybe an image form or something like that so, and that's got some text. This will all make sense, hopefully, even if the actual content is a little bit of a silly example. <laughs> so now if I save that, uh, let's change the background, shall we? Let's make it a different color. My uh, color picket is totally off screen as well. That is because I'm zoomed in, where is it? It's over here. Bring that back up there. <laughs> so uh, I'll change the background to be, uh, let's make it red, shall we? Since it's Christmas red's a bit more of a Christmassy color and let's make the text whoops the text can be uh, white there we go that was a lot more tricky than it needed to be wasn't it so let's say that we've got uh, this obviously this is a really silly example isn't it so we've got this one and uh, now let's say that we want to uh, duplicate this now and I do want to make sure that this is actually in this folder so I'm going to drag that scene into that uh, Christmas demo folder and now what I'm going to do is just duplicate this uh, and we'll call this scene scene 2 and let's just edit this and call this scripture 2 obviously if you did want to put a camera in in fact let's just do this for uh, <laughs> for the sake of it I'll put my camera in there and let me get rid of that uh, rather jarring green screen background and I don't know if uh, I don't know if you are going to be talking over it, Brother Phil, or not. But uh, let me just put that in in any case, just in case. And I'll make that. Let's make it a squirkle, shall we? There we go. <laughs> and we'll change the border on that as well, just while we're here, messing about. 
So uh, there we go. Uh, again, this is all uh, from a design perspective. This is all totally <laughs> shot, isn't it? Uh, in fact, let me put this over this side. How about this? How about I make this one over here like that? Uh, it's all a bit small, that, isn't it? But anyway, you get the idea. I'm just uh, playing around here and just adding some stuff on to demonstrate. So let me copy that one. And then I'll just put that into scene one. Oh, by the way, in case you uh, had missed the uh, the memo, uh, in Ecamm Live version uh, 3.9, you can uh, copy and paste uh, overlays to uh, from one scene to the next. So if I come into this one and I copy that, and then I go to this scene, uh, then basically I can press Command V and just paste that in there as well. So here we've, we've basically got scene one and scene two. So as I change that, you'll notice, uh, although the position of that's just moved, never mind. Uh, if you uh, notice, the music in the background is just playing and the videos are now looping in the background as well. And that's all happening basically independently of one another. Now, because we have got these scenes in here in this folder, what we can also do is we could add a timer into here. So let's add a timer to basically advance to the next scene. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the timer. But what I want to do is make this uh, uh, transparent. So I'll take off the background ground uh, and then what I'll do is for the actual text itself and I'm also going to change the time uh, from um, 10 minutes to basically 10 seconds so 15 seconds there you go and then what I want to do as well is if I just take change the text so I want to change the text color uh, to be uh, transparent basically like that so now I've got a timer and it is uh, transparent and it is just there. So now what I want to do as well is if I click on the timer, uh, what you do is you say that when you've finished, you want to go to the next scene. So as soon as that countdown has finished, it will just go on to the next scene. And then what we're going to do is we're going to actually copy that timer. Copy. I could have done this actually before, but there you go. Let's have a little look. If I uh, restart it because it's actually stopped. So restart it. Oh, there you go. It's actually worked. So it's moved us on to the next scene now. So now if I paste that timer in there, uh, and we'll just double check that. So that is auto start is on and go to the next scene is on. So now what you can see, in fact, let me just change the color of this one, just so that it is really obvious that we are changing the scenes. So now we're in this scene. And when the timer counts down from 15 seconds, uh, what should happen is it will go on to the next scene automatically. So you can imagine now uh, basically building out a whole series of scenes if you wanted to with different overlays, obviously with a little bit more design thought and effort gone into it than this. Uh, and you could either be talking over it uh, and advancing them manually or, or if it was just something that was going to be played with these different messages and things coming up, uh, then you could just sort of get rid of uh, the camera altogether. Uh, and let's put that up there. And this thing would just loop endlessly now uh, getting rid of my face again <laughs> whoops wrong one so this is now just totally looping so if I come out of demo mode uh, what you'll see is that this will whoops just keep on uh, looping now uh, so there we go on the first scripture all the music all the videos all the overlays moving uh, completely independently of one another as well. So you saw the video has just changed there uh, and then we're about to change back to scripture number one and so forth. So the way that this works as well is the, the or the crucial element is just making sure that you have got the overlays all in a specific demo folder. In fact, I'm just going to stop the music now. I'm sorry to spoil Christmas. <laughs> Let's come back to, uh, to this and I'm just going to toggle my regular uh, regular background on. Uh, so that is basically the uh, the little trick there is to use that little looping thing with the uh, the overlays and the invisible timers uh, so that it all just does run seamlessly. So uh, I think that that does answer your question, Brother Phil. But if uh, if you've got any issues with it, obviously uh, let me know and I'll be uh, happy to help out. So hope that helped some more of you as well. And if you did find it useful, then uh, oh, that's a bit of unfortunate, isn't it? <laughs> you won't know this, but I've just switched off my stream deck. <laughs> I thought it was on a different page of my profile, but never mind. So if you found this useful, <laughs> then uh, please go ahead and click the uh, like and subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on notifications, by the way, because you wouldn't want to miss me going live or something like that. So once you've clicked the subscribe button, there is also a notifications button that you can click on there as well. So don't forget that one. And of course, you can always head over to buymeacoffee.com slash take one tech. 
if you're finding this extra useful. That's all for me for now. However, don't go anywhere because there is a load more Ecamm Live videos coming up right now on the right hand side. Uh, and Google and YouTube will pick a special video just for you up in the top right. Have a great day, everyone.